Hey, John Fevis here for Whistlebiz.com. Thanks for tuning in again today. Today is part three of our LID series, Learning, Improving, and Discovery series. Yesterday we talked about level five leadership and how that manifestation looks within our organization as becoming a servant leader. And we talked about some of those characteristics. Today we're going to talk about the third ground rule, which is learn to become a follower. So again, these ground rules are about rules that are probably fighting a tide or inertia within our culture. And we know that this, these are difficult ground rules, but they're very important to lay, be laying the foundation of, for our improving framework uh, within our organization. So let's go ahead and start with that. So become a good leader. What does that mean? Well, every year our, our country uh, graduates about a million graduates from our universities. And they're all told to be very good leaders. But the truth of the matter is you can never be a good leader unless you know how to be a good follower. And on top of that, some people never want to be a leader. Some people will, would like to shy away from any area of influence and they will have to be a follower. So the question is, why don't we have more of a conversation about what it looks like to be a good follower? I don't believe that the two things between being a good leader and being a good follower are mutually exclusive necessarily. And I think that we can actually look at the two major qualities that are behind level five leadership and be able to see that they're complementary to, uh, to following. In fact, I'd like to call it level five following because of because how complementary they are. So let's go ahead and start with the first quality of level five leadership, which is a will and an ambition for, a, uh, for something outside yourself, for your company, for your organization, for your nonprofit, for what, whatever that is, having a will and an ambition for that. So that is a automatic question as a leader. Uh, am I arguing for what is right, for what is the good uh, for the organization, or am I arguing to be right? Uh, not necessarily going after that, you know, going after what is best for, for the thing that is outside of me. The same thing is with the follower. As, as a follower, we need to be able to make sure that when we're, when we're following a particular priority or objective, that we know that our ego is, skew, is skewing the, is not skewing the execution of that objective at all, right? We have checked our ego because we're going after the very best possible way of executing against that target or against that objective. So the second way is humility. Obviously, for, for these great leaders, humility is the number one thing. Being able to listen and being able to hear what's going on and being able to be changed and be, be, acceptance of, be accepting of other ideas. In fact, that we may even call that following anyway. It's the fact that you'll be open and transparent and be able to be moving and changing. The fact that we're saying that we have evidence that the best leaders in our companies are the ones that are listening or being changed means that they know how to follow. Because that is exactly what we need to be able to do over here. We need to be able to understand and accept other people's ideas and be moved by them. Again, be humble and put ourselves back to be able to truly hear what's going on. So, so again, these are practices and the two challenge. And this is a huge, a huge world we're talking about as far as becoming a good follower. I, I, I could list 20 qualities, you, you know, around this, but, but I just wanted to hit it because I, I think it's so crucial and important that in our day to day lives, we're both a leader often and we both need to be a good follower often and they don't need to be mutually exclusive by the qualities that satiate both of them. So specifically the challenges, let's go ahead and start with the, the will or the ego part of it. If we can actually stop our work and look at our initiatives and one and ask ourselves, am I doing these things, these initiatives, let's put the five initiatives, let's say you're working out or projects that you're working on or objectives that you're working on, put them in front of you and say, am I working on this or that or putting more work over here or more work over there because it makes me look good, because I know I'll be recognized, because it's about me, or is it because, or are you putting your time and effort where it's not about you, but about the third party, about the thing that's outside of you, about the company you're working for? Secondly, humility. So the question here is, what, what I would challenge you to is, whatever meetings you're going to today, whatever conversations you're having, debates, dialogues, whatever you're having today, do not be the first person to put your input in there. What I would say, what my challenge is for you to do is to stop and really listen. So that's it for today on, on the ground rules. Let me know how that works out and have a wonderful day. Bye.